Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Terry Milton. Um, Terry is going to talk about living with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH, N-A-S-H. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Terry. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me with you. I understand that that you're an educator. Is is that correct? I'm active in educating adults, but I'm not a um, degree educator in that Mm -hmm. and and teaching children and stuff. But I've worked in Mm -hmm. training adults for, gosh, 25 years. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's it's a passion. It's something Mm -hmm. I enjoy. We're going to talk this morning about NASH. What is your experience with NASH, this type of uh, hepatitis? Well, it, it's my journey started about 20 years ago when I was diagnosed with fatty liver. And at the time, my doctor told me, don't worry about it. Everybody has it. And we'll just check on you every once in a while. Well, I, I can tell you, honestly, 20 years went by and, and I didn't even think about it. And my doctors, nothing ever showed up. So we never thought about it again. Um, In 2017, I started having some health problems. I traced it back to a a gallbladder that wasn't doing too well and had elective gallbladder gallbladder surgery. Um, During that, my surgeon saw that my my liver was not well and Mm -hmm. did a couple of biopsies in, in, in some places. And the result came back as NASH. Um, and not only what did I have NASH, but it had progressed to cirrhosis. So I had a disease I'd never heard of (laughs) and another one that I could never believe it would have happened to me. So that was kind of my introduction to NASH. You mentioned cirrhosis. Now, myself included, like a lot of others, uh, they hear cirrhosis and they automatically think of alcohol, uh, alcoholism, um, uh, cirrhosis of the liver due to alcohol, but NASH is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Uh, what was your reaction? I mean, you're, you're not, you weren't a heavy drinker or is, if I can ask? I'm not, not a drinker at all. And so oh, that okay. was where the surprise was because my, my understanding was the same thing. That was the only time that I ever heard, um, the term cirrhosis was in, in, in relationship to somebody who uh, was a drinker. And here I am is, is, you know, I didn't drink at all by choice. Um, hmm. And so, so when I, when having that and, and realizing that cirrhosis was part of my life, that's when I started investigating uh, is I started really doing a lot of research to find out exactly how I ended up there. And and I, I'm glad that I did because with research comes understanding, um, learned how to be an advocate for myself and to to really not just take for granted what, what I was hearing, but also to to look at the whole picture. How much of that whole picture um, included stigma that you weren't aware of existed around uh, liver disease and cirrhosis specifically? Um, my first, well, first is anytime uh, any of friends or family would talk to me as the first thing I'd say, well, but Terry, you don't drink. So uh, it was immediate uh, without a doubt. Uh, the first time I had a health professional um bring that up was in the hospital as an on-call doctor uh, was on call for my GI um, asked me one day when when was the last time I took my last drink mm-hmm. and, and quite innocently I said well I, I just took a drink and, and he looked at me and my husband's eyes got big and he says oh no 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 she drinks some water <laughs> she doesn't mm-hmm. drink she has cirrhosis from NASH and and so that was my first introduction that even within within healthcare is mm-hmm. that there is stigma that's attached to it. Do you find yourself having to educate physicians or did you have have to educate physicians in the early part of your journey about what you were going through at the outset of almost any conversation or were there physicians that were a little bit in the know? Um, I can tell you every time I go to the emergency room, it is it's having to re-educate. Um, so that's that definitely is the the first place, and so it's very good to understand uh, what your health problems are because you're going to if you as I 
in the last two years, I have been to the emergency room 25 times. And so that means, so I'm, I'm glad when I see a doctor that's familiar because I don't have to do it all, all over again. Um, but, and, and some do, some do completely understand. When I w- went in one time with um, my, my abdomen full of fluid or ascites, um, the doctor immediately knew what that was and was able to do, uh, was to, able to get me treatment that I needed immediately because it was affecting my breathing. So not everybody is, is informed. And, and I am so glad for emergency room doctors, don't get me wrong, is because I know that they're there to save my life. But that, that doesn't mean that they know the ins and outs of different diseases. So I need to know, and my, my caregiver needs to know and understand what's going on. The same thing whenever I had to go in for uh, hepatic encephalopathy, which is confusion. And having explain to to an ER doctor then at that time, no, <laughs> I have cirrhosis. I believe this is an, an HE episode. Um, and of course, my ammonia levels were, were elevated. I did, was hospitalized. Um, but having to be aware and, and know what, what's happening. When it comes to that doctor that you mentioned in the early part of your journey saying, well, you've got a fatty liver, everybody has one. That sounds like uh, one of those statements, you know, that that permeates throughout the medical community about a certain thing. Then we find out that, you know, it's a big deal. Have you discovered what causes it? Because you were you were young when it when you were told that you had fatty liver. And then 20 years later, we find out that it's a problem. Is it a problem for some people and not others? Uh, what causes it? Um, I can honestly tell you is that we, ha- we have a lifestyle problem in, 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 uh, in the United States or actually in any place that has fast food. Um, and so any time that we have meals that are larger than what we should be eating, there's going to be problems. And and so in those early years when I was diagnosed with fatty liver, I can honestly tell you that it was lifestyle. Um, I wasn't drinking, but there is food stuff problems. You know, is we like our desserts, we like our our um, huge size restaurant deals, um, and and with all of that comes comes the problems with that. <laughs> You're, you're here wa- raising awareness and you raise a, a massive point, a huge, very important point about the, the lifestyle. And it seems that this these foods, they're pushed on us um, at a cheap price that you see one every commercial, every radio commercial, every billboard. It's all about the lifestyle that causes everybody, you know, quote unquote, to have fatty liver. What is your advice to a people who may suspect that they're you know, a little bit nervous about their liver function or wanting to change their lifestyle to avoid possibly having NASH? Um, is, is definitely first is, is, is portion control. Um, if I could go back and do things all over again, I would do five to six smaller meals per day rather than the three, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, so first, you know, definitely that give your, give your body time to, to be able to, um, to digest the food that, that you're already eating. Secondly, is definitely the type of foods, sticking with fresh fruit and vegetables, lean meats, uh, cutting out sugar, uh, white flour. <laughs> I love bread, but it's not good for me. Give us a website where we can go and get more information about Nash and um, some lifestyle change advice. Well, I am so happy to be working with Intercept Pharmaceuticals on awareness, and um, has, they have set up an, an amazing website at nashtruth.com. Um, it is easily able to understand, has some uh, some points on there uh, to to be able to click on. Um, I love the resource that uh, is there for, for people to download and be able to take a questionnaire to their doctors. Uh, to start those conversations, um, it, the beginning of of anything is is definitely stop stopping it before it starts. But even if a person has Nash, it, it's not the end of the world. Um, I live life fully and completely and full of joy, and uh, look forward to every day. Well, I appreciate you coming on and talking with us here at Health Professional Radio, Terry. Thank you so much for having me. 
You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this conversation with Terry Milton are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.